One of the most important uses for these inductors is transformers, which convert voltage. Let me first explain why they are so useful. If you want to take electricity from one place to another, you do it on power lines. So you've got power lines and electric circuits going from one to the other, from a power station to a city where it's used, which may be hundreds or even thousands of kilometers away. Now, at the end, you take these wires and make them do something, like run a washing machine or power a house. And for that, you're going to need a certain amount of power. And power is the current times the voltage. So you have a choice. To send a given amount of power down a power line, you can have a large current and a small voltage, or a large voltage and a small current, or any combination of the two. Now, if these wires were superconductors and had no resistance, it wouldn't matter. You could take any combination you liked that gave you a particular power. But, in practice, these are copper wires, and copper wires do have a little bit of resistance. You can make that resistance small if you make the wires incredibly thick, but copper is expensive and that's very expensive too. So you want the wires as thin as you can get away with, which means they're going to have a bit of resistance. And that's going to waste heat. As all the electrons flow down these wires with a resistor, they're going to bash into the atoms and heat the whole thing up and make the wires A, get very hot, which is dangerous, and B, waste lots of power in the transmission. So what you really want is the highest voltage you can get away with and the lowest current you can get away with, because that way the number of electrons flowing down the wire is very small, therefore it's not going to heat up the wires very much and not waste the power. So like a billion volts and 0.03 amps would be great. On the other hand, if you make the voltage too high, you're then going to get bolts of lightning sparking down to the ground. And also when you get to the other end, if you had like a million volts coming into your mobile phone, it's going to burn through the resistors, it's going to give you an electric shock every time you touch it, the electricity is going to go places you don't want it. So once you're in the house, you want to bring the voltage down to a much lower value, so you don't have to put really thick resistance around everything. And there it doesn't matter if the wires are a bit thicker, it's not going to cost you too much. So the crucial thing is you want a very high voltage for your power lines, and then you want to reduce it to a low voltage when you actually get into the house. And that's what a transformer does. Here's the basic idea. You get a primary loop, wire loop, which has, say, n1 turns. And then you have a secondary loop, might be outside or inside the first one, which has n2 loops. Now, the first one generates a magnetic field, which goes through the center of both the loops. And the strength of that magnetic field is just uh, given by the usual solenoid equation mu naught n1 current over d where d is the length of that that means that's generating the magnetic field the electromotive force in the second loop in the second loop is just given by the normal faraday's law so it's and 2 a the rate of change of the magnetic field. So it's just the flux, the change in flux, which is this bit for one loop, and then you've got n2 loops, so you're going to multiply by n2. Which, if you plug the equation of the magnetic field into here, that comes out as n2 in the area, that's the cross sectional area of the inside of the solenoids times mu naught n1 over d times the rate of change of the current. So that's the voltage you're getting out of the second red coil. How much voltage is going in? What's the voltage across the input blue one? Well, that's going to be given by the, the inductor equation. It's going to be the voltage in is just the L times di by dt, where L is the self-inductance of the first coil. Now we know that L is given by mu naught n1 squared over d a di by dt. So here we have the voltage out, here we have the voltage in, and we can see the two equations look very similar. 
The only difference is this one has an n1 squared, whereas that one has an n1 times n2. So if we take the voltage out and divide it by the voltage in, almost everything cancels out, and we just get the n2, it's the number of loops in the output coil, divided by n1. And that's the fundamental equation for transformers. If you want to drop the voltage 10 times, you need 10 times fewer loops on the output than the input. If you want to make the voltage 10 times bigger, you'd have uh, 10 times more loops on the input than the output. If you've got the same number of loops on the input as the output, it doesn't change the voltage at all. Now, you might think this violates some sort of power constraint because what you've got is you're changing the voltage. So you have a wire in. It never actually touches the wire out. They just share a common core. Often there will be an iron thing in the middle here to make the magnetic field stronger. Um, but if you increase the voltage, it turns out you must decrease the current and vice versa. So if you have a very large voltage and a small current in, you'll end up with a small um, voltage and a large current out. So it doesn't violate conservation of energy. And this is how you transform the very high voltages from the power line into low voltages inside the house.